Okay, guys, guys. Um, today I'm going to be doing a mod on my KK2 controller board. Um, what's happened is the back button, or S1, is giving me a few issues uh, with staying pressed when I do my ESC calibration. So when I do that, it's going into the menu and all sorts of stupid things, which is making me just a little bit angry. So what my plan is, is I was having a look at the board, and if you look on the back of your board, you'll notice switch 1, switch 2, We're switch 3. Right here, past my... Um, my voltage indicator plug. So, you should be able to see on the camera, just to be sure. Um, let me just make sure I catch this. Okay, if you look at the bottom of your board, you'll notice switch one, two, three, four. Yeah, that is in the right order. So, what I'm going to do is I'm to take switch one, switch four's pin, and this common over here. And I'm going to run them neatly up down the center and across here, and I'm going to cable tie them in or shrink them on there. Um, so it'll be basically bridging switch 1, switch 3, I mean switch 4, for your ESC calibration. What you're going to need for this, is either a server extension lead that you're going to cut, or some other wire in the plugs. For me, I've got the wire in the plugs, so I'm going to use that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm first going to take my wire and my plugs, I'm going to see where I want it to come out. Um, this is a 2, two one. I got it with one of the Turnigy products I bought, um, the multi-switch. I don't recommend you buy it, but anyway. Um, yeah, so I got it with that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this one to there. So I'm just going to chop it off. Side cutters. Okay. And then grab my exacto and I'm just going to separate this. I'm going to run the two reds as the switching in case I ever need to pull them out for some other some other reason. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I'm just going to pop them all back into this little switching little housing. There we go. Okay, I've got a working one now. So now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to plug them all in. Like so. Okay. And then I'm just going to retwist this together so that they all stay neatly together for me. Okay. So now what's going to happen is that's going to run from there, just at the ESC plug, I'm going to run to the center of the board, and I'm going to run down accordingly to where it needs to go. So those two need to get around a bit more. Okay, so those two are going to run down there, to that side of the board, and this one is going to run to there. So, once again, chop it off, okay, and then you want to peel back just a millimeter or two. Uh, off the end. And so basically what's going to happen is that's going to neatly get soldered to there, that's going to run to there, and this one's going to get shortened a bit more. Okay, now that I've got them all nice, um, I'm just quickly going to tin them. Just solder, I don't have flux, so just run the soldering on slightly warmer, which is not ideal for board soldering, but anyway. Okay. And then you know, I clean the tip again, turn the temperature on my soldering iron down a bit. Just, these are gold plated, so it shouldn't be an issue to solder to them. If you're having an issue, you can always use a fiberglass pen. There's epoxy on the board. I believe there is on the KKs. Okay, that's that one tinned. If that one tinned, I'm just going to tin the common. Okay, it's all of them tinned. Clean the soldering iron, and then I'm going to start with this one here. Now, I don't want it to touch the LCD's mounting, so solder it carefully. And then I'm going to move on to the other switches. Mm -hmm. Okay, like 
that. Soldered. And lastly, I'm going to do my earth or my grounding. Just bend it so that it touches and done. The trick is also not to get the book too warm. Okay, now those are all done. Now, like I said, read them up the middle. Bend them to 90 over there. Like that, and then I might attack it with a bit of hot glue later. Um, and then, just so we don't have it breaking off, I crash. See, not even if when I crash. I'm just going to sit tight to the thing. There we go. Okay, so now I've added a ESC calibration to my board, a physical override on that. So it may, we'll switch one, switch three. Once you've done that part of it, you need to then make up your bridge pins. Bridge pins, you need a three pin like that. Okay. Um, yeah, that's where a set of helping hands really help. Um, okay, what you're going to want to do, I've made up a short wire for a pull stub on it, so I can plug it in and unplug it easily. Similar to your bind wires on your remotes, on your cheaper remotes. And then I've cleaned quite a bit of this wire. I'm just going to tin both ends. And then I'm going to push it across all three. Solder it on. And then I'm going to do the opposite side. So it's going to want to make a loop like that. And then just solder that in too. I'm going to try to get it kind of neat. Um, and there we go. We've got a binding plug. Now what happens is this will bridge all three and give you the signal you want to enable ESC calibration. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick test. Um, turn around. Okay. Um, I broke one of my arms off my tricopter. But anyway, that's not important. So now I'm going to take the bind pin, put it in, and I'm going to find the power from my ESC, which is actually going to be the power from my receiver. And I'm just going to plug that in. Okay. So now, in theory, when I plug this battery in, it should start giving me the ESC calibration. I hope. Okay. Here we go. ESC calibration is enabled. Until such time as I unplug, it'll be in ESC calibration mode. Um, that's just so, because I'm using this one board on two vehicles, I want to calibrate it every time just as a precaution, because I've noticed I've had issues with this tricopter and not calibration. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Um, please rate and subscribe, and there will be a video of the tricopter, my version 6, being uploaded shortly. Thank you.